Just briefly as an introduction, uh, the Springs Institute started last year. It's named after Howard T. Oden. We did the first comprehensive spring study back in the 50s. Um, it's a uh, program under Florida's Eaton, so it's a, a 501c3 nonprofit. It's a, a private nonprofit, and uh, it's dedicated to the protection and restoration of springs. Uh, the goals and the mission of the Institute are to uh, provide uh, monitoring of the conditions of our springs so we actually have a, a good idea of what, how they're trending. Are they getting better? Are they getting worse? Uh, to provide good science for springs management decisions, uh, to provide education for the public because I think most of the people in Florida don't really realize how uh, harmed springs are compared to their historic condition and what they used to look like. And then also to look for and support the right kinds of development and future in Florida that will keep springs as part of our um, economic engine for the state, which they are. Uh, there are over 900 artesian springs now documented by DEP's uh, um, groundwater department. Uh, they're scattered through Florida from Tampa north out to the Panhandle. Uh, not every part of the state has springs. The South Florida Water Manager District really isn't involved today, but all the other districts are. Um, and the springs are associated with our karst area and our, wherever the Florida aquifer is close to the surface is where you have springs. Um, we have big problems in parts of these, this area. Actually, most of the area has declining groundwater resources as well as elevated levels of nitrate in the springs. And those are the two biggest problems. There are other problems, but those two problems are leading to sort of a, a double hitter on springs uh, in terms of uh, hitting them below the belt both times. Uh, they're, they're really showing effects of both of these uh, problems, as you can see. In, uh, if you go to the springs now and look at what they look like in the 50s or earlier. These springs are extremely important to this part of Florida for the economy. This is a, a preliminary estimate of their direct economic value uh, for the springs and state parks. Over $300 million a year. Uh, that's Rock Springs run. Uh, the, the, the recreational uh, uh, values of springs are enormous. And, Part of the session today is talk about economic evaluation of springs. We need more of that if we're going to convince people to do the right things. And so today's workshop is dedicated to this, and I, that's all I'm going to talk about now. Um, just um, some background. We have a number of speakers. We've got a, a couple of introductory talks. Uh, David Still, the executive director of the uh, Swanee River Water Management District, is here uh, with us today. We'll give the first talk. And then... Uh, the talks in general will be about a half hour assigned to each presentation, but I'm asking the speakers to keep their talks to about 15 minutes, maximum of 20 minutes. And uh, we'll hold a little sign up when you get to 15 minutes that indicates you're down to your last five minutes, and then the book comes out. Unfortunately, as a moderator, I'd be the bad guy too, but I really want to try to make sure there's enough time for everybody to speak. Uh, but we'll try to keep them uh, down. The people with 30 slides aren't going to get them all in, I'm afraid. Um, and we'll have a break at 9.45. It's only a 15-minute break, so it's really a stand up, refresh yourself, and uh, there's really not much time to do anything else at that break. And then we'll have a lunch break of an hour, and we'll talk more about that at the, uh, before the morning break. So, any other news? Okay, uh, Dave Still, if you can uh, introduce us. And Good morning. Most of, uh, most of y'all know me. I'm David Still with Swanee River Water Management District. And normally I prefer just to talk without notes, but springs are extremely important to me. I serve a district that has over 260 springs, 21 of the 33 states' first magnitude springs. Springs are important. But what I want to do today is challenge you, and I'm going to, I'm going to read my, my speech or my comments because you have to understand this is so near and dear and so important to this community and to our lives that we have got to figure out a way to make a difference. Welcome to the Florida Springs Heartland and to Otter Springs Park, owned by the Swanee River Water Management District and managed by Gilchrist County. Otter is one of the many natural jewels that have earned North Florida the designation as the Springs Heartland. 
I think we'll all agree there's no other place on earth like the Springs Heartland. And the reason we're here today is because we're passionate about restoring and protecting those natural assets. You have a full schedule today, so I'll keep my remarks brief and to the point. Truthfully, if it were up to me today, I would shuffle the agenda and start up with a wrap-up session that's, what's next? And here's why. We have been invited here today to begin a statewide dialogue about Springs Restoration. It may be impolite to point this out, but the dialogue began about a decade ago in 1999 with the formation of the Florida Springs Task Force, and the dialogue has continued ever since. Most, if not all of us in this room, and look around because we all know each other, have been a part of that ongoing dialogue, whether it's been through the Springs Task Force, Springs Working Groups, partnerships, Friends of Springs groups, citizen groups, environmental groups, state agencies, universities, workshops, conferences, and other initiatives, we've debated, we've discussed, we've studied, we've researched Springs issues until one wonders what more is there to talk about today other than what's next. I must admit that when I read the outcome of today's workshop will be the germination of a Springs, Florida Springs Restoration Action Plan to help coordinate the region-wide activities needed to nurture Springs Restoration, my reaction was, don't we already have several such plans in place? And if so, why do we need another one? To illustrate my point, I have brought some of the already published Springs Restoration plans. Included in this is a five-page bibliography listing many more of those that are just for the issue tucking. Last month, the University of Florida's Water Institute hosted a workshop to review and discuss a vast body of research that's been conducted for the Institute and to identify possible gaps in research that might be explored. Comparing such notes is valuable. It helps steer researchers toward waters yet to be explored so they won't waste precious time and money reinventing the wheel. So let's take a few moments to compare notes on some existing restoration plans and how they may eliminate the need to craft new ones. In the late 2000, the Springs Task Force prepared the Springs, Florida Springs Strategies for Protection and Restoration, a detailed plan that has guided the DEP Springs Initiative in serving as a focal point for improving the understanding of springs and in fostering science-based education, management, and restoration action plans needed to protect springs throughout Florida. From 2001 through 2010, DEP spent $24.5 million on research and monitoring, preservation, landowner assistance projects, restoration and protection activities in state parks, environmental education, and community involvement programs, including the formation of Springs Working Groups and the initiation of the Best Management Action Plan process. The Spring Working Groups and the BMAP coordinators currently are developing restoration plans for river basins and individual springs with input from stakeholders. It only seems logical that then DDP, a proven and successful focal point for statewide springs coordination, should continue in their leadership role. In an era of scarce resources, I'm wondering how much sense it makes to start a new initiative whose process has developed yet more restoration plans. Wouldn't it be more efficient, practical, and cost-effective to make better use of these plans already available and the resources and partnerships already at work? We know our springs are impaired, and we know the reasons why. We know our springs have stopped flowing due to overpumping, and we know we must resolve local and interdistrict water supply issues. We know our springs are economic engines, as Bob just pointed out, for rural economies and the state. We know the health of our springs would improve if we used less fertilizer and repair or replace septic tanks. We know that low impact development should be standard in high impact areas as Tom Taylor and I talked about early today. We, we must know that we have to educate farmers and homeowners about best practices to provide the technical and financial support they need to improve them. We already know what the problems are and we have a good idea of what must be done to solve them. Our springs are sick, and the road to recovery is long and expensive. So maybe it's time to shift our focus from diagnosing the illness to treating it. Maybe we should spend less time talking about what ails our springs instead, dust off our restoration plans already prepared, and get to work guarding the social, political, and financial support necessary to reach our goals. 
We can do this through solid, well-established local and regional programs such as the Swanee River Partnership, the Itchtucky Partnership, whose diverse members and supporters include key community leaders and officials. We can do this through Springs Working Groups and BMAP coordinators who will support and continue to engage stakeholders in the restoration planning process and provide direction and coordination of outreach activities. We can do this with the help of organizations such as the Florida Zeden, whose members bring energy, creativity, inspiration, awareness, and fundraising expertise to the effort. And we know we have the Springs Institute that will serve as a central clearinghouse for the wealth of Springs research, data, and general information that can help move us forward. In the most recent election, and in the events that have followed, has taught us anything, it's this. People are sick and tired. They want action. They want efficiency. And they want coordination. They do not want duplication of effort. We have a purpose. We have a plan. We have partners. We know what to do. Let's get to work.